Praise the Lord. Welcome to Monday morning um, prayer and devotion. This week we're doing things a little bit differently. If you'll notice, uh, this is probably stating premiere instead of the normal live. And that's because of the difference in time zones, me being out of pocket this week. Um, I'm just not able to uh, come at the right time. And so we're going to do this a little bit differently. You should see the needs posted by your friends and prayer partners. And if you'll pray for those needs today specifically, I'll be praying more in generalities as we go through the devotion over this week and into next week. Prayer requests this morning that we want to remember, of course, many spiritual needs that we continue to pray for. Jennifer and Brenda's family members, we want to remember them. Sylvia's family, uh, Peggy Fiedler's children need to return to the Lord. Pam Pulliam's children, we want to remember them. Judy and Mike Williams' daughter, Jennifer. Caroline's children and grandchildren need a closer walk with God. We want to pray for Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jamie, and her family. Carmen's daughter, Grace, needs our prayers today. Connor and Haley are in need of salvation. Tasha Ray's husband and sister need salvation. We want to continue to pray for Lori Arbo's mother, for Art Chandler, for Terry Adams' children. For Mark and Caitlin to return to the Lord, we want to remember Frank and all of Beulah's uh, grandchildren. We want to remember Josiah today and Marcia's sons, Josh and Zach Moore. Let's lift them up in prayer this morning. We want to continue to pray for all issues that are related to COVID-19. We know there are many that uh, have contracted that infection and uh, the spike um, has continued in many places and we just want to continue to hold up those in prayer pray for those who are most vulnerable the elderly and the infirm that they would not contract this and let's pray for breakthroughs in treatments and in vaccines and uh, we want to just believe God to help all those uh, today to come off ventilators to come out of medically induced comas and so many today that are afflicted with that, that even you and I know, and those who have been tested positive. So let's continue to remember them in prayer. We want to pray for all those who are battling cancer. We want to pray for continued recovery for Gerald Yeely, for Evelyn Marshall, for Dwayne Rogers' mother-in-law, for Steve Skates, uh, Cody Robinette, Brandy Bryant, Nick Searcy, Rue, Adrian Neely, and Ethan Harville. All of these have had tremendous progress. We want to continue to believe God for a touch in their lives today. We want to pray for all those that are struggling with mental health issues, those who are battling with depression, those who are battling with bipolar disorder and dementia, um, that God would touch their minds today. And whether those causes be from clinical sources or, or spiritual of a spiritual nature, our God is able to take care of those needs today. We want to pray today for healing of high blood pressure, healing of diabetes, people that are struggling with allergies and breathing problems and diseases of the lungs. We want to pray against heart disease today and against Parkinson's disease. We want to pray today for uh, those who are shut in that aren't able to attend church services either due to age or due to restrictions in the area that they're living in. We want to pray for our nursing home residents especially today who are cut off from much of the normal fellowship that they are able to have. We want to pray for all those who are awaiting test results whether it be for COVID testing or medical testing, those who are facing surgeries. Pray for guidance for the surgeons today for God's hand of protection upon the patients and uh, we want to pray for those who are experiencing marital problems today those who are dealing with job situations in this economy, underemployed and unemployed. Um, we want to pray for our president and for our leaders that God's will will be done in our nation and especially in the elections that are upcoming. We know that God is in control. He sets up kings. He removes kings, and we trust him. But we need to be sensitive to his spirit as we begin to 
uh, look toward going to the polls and voting in the presidential election and right down to the local level. I welcome each of you this morning. I thank you for joining me. Please take a moment and welcome one another and maybe share an encouraging word today as we go into our morning devotion. Our scripture today I want to read from is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now I want to state here at the beginning of devotion today that uh, this devotional series is not original uh, to me. This is something that you can look up for yourself on the Uversion app and uh, download that app. Maybe you already have it. Uh, they have many Bible reading plans. And I would like to, over the next week or so, I would like to try to encourage you to uh, use that in your personal devotion. I enjoy us doing this together, and we'll continue to do this. But this is not the only devotion I do. I do this devotion with you, but I also have a personal time of devotion and group devotion is wonderful, but I want to encourage you to make sure that you spend time every day in the Word of God yourself and uh, digging out truths and letting the Word of God speak to you uh, yourself in a very personal way. And you'll see that God will speak to you uh, just as He will speak to you through others. He'll speak to you as you read His Word. And so these devotionals are... Um, are um, they're available for you on version, and the title of this devotional series is Encouragement for a World in Crisis. And we want everyone to know today that regardless of what you're going through, God has good plans for you. Amen. God has good plans for your life. And our prayer today is that God would fill you with his joy and his peace, and that as you trust in him, as the scripture says, you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Ghost working in your life. You know, we're living in an unprecedented time as we navigate the life-threatening and economy-shaking struggles that we're facing because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the past, we've seen catastrophic diseases, disasters, and wars impact various countries, but this is different. At this time, the whole world has something in common. We're all trying to survive this deadly virus, whether it's uh, something that we're worried about physically, and I know that many people it does not really affect that, that badly, even if you get it, but the economy affects us, and the impact on the school systems and, and businesses, our jobs, all these things are in the balance, and so we're trying to survive this pandemic together. And as followers of Jesus, we have to figure out how do we make sense of this? What do we do with our questions to God uh, and our questions of God? How do we find good news when we turn on the news and all there is is a continual stream of bad news? How do we grasp how this fits into uh, the Word of God and into the promises of the Word of God? Jeremiah um, talked about this extensively. You can read this. If you'll look up in this Uversion app, you can read in Jeremiah 27, Jeremiah 28, and Jeremiah 29, verse 1 through 14. You can see Jeremiah grappling with these same issues. And God said, for I know I have plans, or for I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29 and 11. This verse gives hope and is our spiritual security blanket in hard times. It's printed on t-shirts, it's etched on coffee mugs, it's stamped on greeting cards. While God is a hope giver, we have to understand the context, though, of this cherished verse. Jeremiah prophesied to the Israelites in the southern kingdom of Judah before they were taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And in Jeremiah chapter 27, he prophesied that they would serve this king, they would serve his son, they would serve even his grandson, and that everything would be under their control. And in the next chapter, a false prophet named Hananiah told the people of God that God was going to free them and that he would restore them in two years. And Jeremiah challenged Hananiah because of his lies. He also said that 
Hananiah would die, and in two months, uh, he was dead. In chapter 29, Jeremiah encouraged the people to live their lives while they were in exile, to work, to marry, to plant, to eat, and to multiply. And he told them that they would be in Babylon for 70 years, but then they would be brought home again. God's plans of a hope and a future for his chosen people probably didn't match what their idea was, just like it doesn't match maybe what our idea is right now. They wanted to go home, and yet God said it'll be 70 years. They wanted their own king, but God said they would have to serve the Babylonian king. They wanted to flourish in their homeland, but God said to do that under a government um, that was holding them captive uh, was what the order of the day was. They were going to have to do it right there. And possibly the hardest part was that the older generation would never go back home again. They would indeed die in that foreign land serving a foreign king, but the, the direction was still the same. Live for God where you're at. Do the best where you're at in the circumstances that you find yourself in. We can't insist on our idea of a bright and hopeful future. You know, we tend to be very short-sighted and very earthly-minded, but God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than what our minds can grasp. But his plan, we need to understand, is a better plan. And his plan will include forever, not just a now and now, but forever in heaven with him, and not just this short little uh, dressing room phase here on earth. If our hope is laced with doubt and with fear and anxiety, then we can change that today. We can change the way that we think about the situation that we're in. We need to eliminate the hope so attitude and replace it with a no so mindset. Our hope should ne never be tied to the conveniences and pleasures of this world and what it has to offer. It should never be tied to the conveniences and pleasures that the world offers us. But instead, we need to fasten our minds on the promises and the truths in the Word of God and fix our sights on the day when our bright and glorious and eternal future becomes reality for us. Instead of spending our time wishing away our predicament, let's have confidence that God will deposit hope into us no matter what we're facing. He will give us what we need. You know, Jesus instructed us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. And he wouldn't have instructed us to pray that if God didn't intend to answer that prayer when we prayed it. So God knows what we need, and he's going to work in our lives today. Let's go to prayer right now, and let's ask God to move in these situations. I encourage you, call these names that you see on the list today before the Lord in prayer. I'm going to pray with you and guide you through the prayer, but you pray specifically as I pray over these general areas of need today, and let's believe God to move in every life, in every situation, amen, for God to infuse fresh hope, and for God to help us to see his ways, amen, his desires for us, and how he's working in our lives through every situation that we go through. Let's pray together, and let's lift up his name for a few moments here. Lord, we bless you today. We worship your great name. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to come together in prayer. Lord, to lift up your name and to glorify you and to recognize who you are in our lives. Lord, to take this moment and just submit our wills to you yet again. And Lord, to acknowledge that you are in control and that we're okay with that, God. We're okay, Lord, with not being in control of our lives as long as you are at the helm. And so we pray your kingdom come today. We pray your will be done in our lives today, God, as we submit our will to your perfect plan. Hallelujah. We trade, God, our wishes, Lord, for your plan today. Hallelujah. For the hope that we have in you. In Jesus' name, we believe your word, God, and we trust in you. And we believe you're giving us our daily bread today. You're giving us what we need this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, mighty God. We lift up your name. And we pray now, Lord, for all of these that are 
needing to return to you, Lord, backsliders uh, that need to return to you, revival that needs to happen in our families and in our communities, God. We call the names of backsliders before you and people, God, who have never yet served you and never known you in the power of your spirit. And we're believing, God, that you're going to move in their lives today. We believe that in these last days is a drawing of your spirit. Uh, let it happen, God, in every family. Lord, those that are most distant from you today, God, there's nothing that's too hard for you and we believe you to move in their lives. We believe for Brenda's family members today, God. We believe for Sylvia's family today, for Peggy's children, Lord, that they're going to serve you. We pray for Randy and Bobby and for Jenny and for Joe today, Sister Pulliam's children, Lord. Move in their lives, God. Direct their paths. Lead them, Lord, in the way that you desire for them to go. We pray, Lord, for Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer. We believe for her salvation, Lord. You're able, God, to do that work in her heart today. Draw her to yourself, God. We pray against any condemnation that would come against her today. Lord, let her see the hope that she has in you this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for Caroline's children and for her grandchildren this morning. We pray, God, that they would draw closer to you, that they would walk with you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for Carmen's daughter. Lord, we pray your influences on her life, God, through those that you place in her life today. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jamie, and her family. We pray for Connor and Haley, Lord, for their salvation this morning. We pray for Tasha's husband, Adam, and for her sister, Heather. God, move in their lives today. Draw them to yourself, Lord. Hallelujah. Draw them by your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray for Lori's mother, God. Lord, that she's going to return to you. We believe that with all of our hearts. We believe for Art Chandler today. We pray for Terry Adams' children today, God. We pray for Mark and Caitlin to return to you. We believe, God, for Frank, God, for what's best in his life, that you're going to meet his needs, that you're going to encourage him. Hallelujah, Lord, you see him today, God, in his need, his family's needs, God. We pray for all of Beulah's grandchildren that you would move in their lives today. We pray for Josiah, Lord. We pray for Marsha's sons, Josh and Zach, Lord. They've known you, and God, we pray that you would draw them back to what they know today. Hallelujah. Let them receive, God, the mercy and the grace that you desire, Lord, to show in their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, today against every sickness and disease. We pray against this coronavirus today in the name of Jesus. We pray for all those who are vulnerable to it, God, for for their protection. We pray for breakthroughs in treatments this morning. We pray, God, for a breakthrough in the search for vaccines, Lord. We pray, God, uh, Lord, that uh, you would give our medical personnel wisdom and direction and protect them, Lord, as they are treating those who are sick today. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for our economy, Lord. We pray for full recovery today. We pray for every job issue for those that are unemployed, those that are un underemployed, Employed, God, because of this pandemic. And we believe you, God, for a full recovery. We pray for our president today, Lord, for our vice president, for our leaders. We pray, God, that you would direct each American, God, in how we vote in this presidential election. God, help us to make righteous decisions, Lord, when we enter the voting booth, God. In Jesus' name, draw this country together. Lord, heal the divisions that are among us, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray today for all those who are battling cancer. God, you're the, you're the master of every sickness and disease, and we believe you, Lord, for their healing today. In Jesus' name, we pray for continued recovery this morning for my Aunt Evelyn, Lord, for Gerald Yeely, for Dwayne's mother-in-law, for Steve Skates. We believe for continued recovery for Cody Robinette, Lord. That's a long road for him, God, but you're with him, and we believe you for a full recovery. We pray, God, for recovery from stroke for Brandy Bryant and for Nick Searcy. And Lord, for Rue today, we believe for his complete recovery, Lord. You see the multiple issues that he's faced throughout his life, but you're with him today, and you're going to continue to help him and touch him today. We pray for Adrian, Lord, that you would continue, Lord, to touch Adrian today and minister recovery to her. We pray for Ethan Harville, God, Lord, that you would touch him after that auto accident, that he would have a full recovery. 
In Jesus' name, we pray for those that are struggling with mental health issues today. God, whatever that it is, whether it's from a spiritual source or, or whether it's from a clinical source, God, we pray, Lord, that you would touch them and make them completely whole. We pray against high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. We claim victory over diabetes right now, over allergies and breathing problems and every disease of the lungs today, emphysema and asthma. We come against in Jesus' Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. COPD, we come against uh, you in Jesus' name. We believe for healing of Parkinson's disease and every neurological disorder today. In the name of Jesus, we pray for every shut-in right now, every nursing home resident. God, that they would receive encouragement, that your spirit would just flow to where they're at, God, and help them and minister to them right now. We pray for all those that are awaiting test results right now, those that have been tested for COVID, Lord, and those that are having medical testing done right now to try to find diagnoses of what's going on in their lives, Lord, in their bodies. We pray for good results today. We pray for negative COVID results, and Lord, for good results from every test today. In Jesus' name, every MRI, every CT scan, we believe, God, for you to move right now. In Jesus' name, every ultrasound, God, we believe you for good results. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray for those that are facing surgeries today. We pray you would guide the hand of the surgeons, Lord. God, that you would protect them as they go through those procedures, Lord. In Jesus' name, be with their families today and strengthen them. And we give you all the praise and the glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, lead us through this day. We give this day to you. We commit it to you, Lord, and all that's in it. Let your perfect will be done, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you today. Amen. Stand upon the word of the Lord. Stand upon the word of the Lord as you go throughout this day. And I look forward to us coming together again tomorrow morning. Again, I'm not able to come to you in real time, but I will be looking at your prayer request. Anything you submit this morning or, or overnight, please um, do that. Go ahead and do that. And even though I'm not praying specifically for those on the air, you can do that. And I'll be catching up with you and praying with you for those needs as well when I'm able to do that throughout this day. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I will see you again tomorrow morning right here on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m.